So in today's video, I'll be walking you through the whole makeup application process. So this video is going to be very step-by-step -step and very, very detailed. So if you're interested, keep on watching. When I first started learning how to apply makeup, my makeup never came out as flawless. And I used to always wonder like, what was I doing wrong? But I didn't realize that I was making one mistake that was affecting everything about my makeup. And that one thing is not applying a primer. So what's a primer and why is it so important? I'll get into that in a second. First, you have to hydrate or moisturize your skin before applying any makeup on. Then next, you wanna apply a primer that suits your skin type. So a primer is a barrier between your skin and the makeup. What that means is that it protects your skin from absorbing the makeup and it helps to really grip your makeup so the full pigmentation of the makeup shows up on your skin. If you don't apply a primer, it could prevent all the makeup that you're applying from blending on your skin. You might blame your makeup skills, but really you should be blaming yourself for not using a primer. If you have oily skin, you wanna use a hydrating or a matte primer. And if you have dry skin, you wanna use primers that are also hydrating or you can use like moisturizing primers. And if you have combination skin, which is like both oily and dry skin, you also want to use a hydrating oil-free primer. So now that you have the primer on, the next step would be the foundation of the makeup. So the purpose of foundation is really just to even out your skin tone and to really like smooth out your imperfections. The most important thing about foundation is you wanna make sure that it matches your skin color. Think of it like building a house. When you build a house, the foundation of the house is the most important thing because without the right foundation the house is not going to hold well together so it's the same thing with makeup if you have a foundation and it's not the right shade your makeup is not going to all collectively look good I like swatching my foundations out on my cheek area just so that I could compare it to my skin tone and the rest of my body you also want to consider the coverage of the foundation this will all be based on preference so there's light coverage medium coverage and full coverage foundation you want to select the coverage based on how much you want to cover on your skin if you don't need a lot of coverage I would say go with a light coverage foundation if you want to cover up more very often then you definitely want to opt for like a full coverage or a medium coverage foundation another thing you want to consider with foundation is your skin types for dry skin you want to use foundations that are radiant or luminous and if you have oily skin you want to use like a matte foundation or like a hydrate oil-free foundation if you have combination skin stick to using foundations that are more so like luminous matte or semi matte foundations. and for normal skin you can use any foundation it just depends on like how currently your skin feels at that time so to apply foundation I like using a damp beauty sponge so how I dampen my sponge is I run it through water I squeeze the water out completely I press the sponge on a paper towel to really just soak the excess water from the sponge. Then immediately I use it to blend out my foundation. You always wanna make sure you're washing your sponge every time you're using it for a flawless makeup look. If you have oily skin, you can use a rounded foundation brush to blend out your foundation because the skin already contains oils on the surface of the skin. So you don't need water to really just help you with the blending. If you have combination skin, you can use both of them. You wanna start with one pump just to build up the coverage and then add more on the areas you need to cover up more the reason you want to start with one pump is because every foundation has different coverage and this avoids cakiness of the overall makeup look And as you can see, this side compared to this side, the foundation match is pretty close to my skin. It's almost a perfect match. It definitely covers up my imperfections because on this side, you don't really see any imperfections. And this side, you can kind of see like the discoloration. So when you put foundation on your skin, you lose dimension on your face. As you guys can see, my face looks really flat. There's no dimension. So you want to bring back that dimension. And to do that, I'm going to start off with concealer. So concealer is usually used to make you look more awake it's supposed to help brighten up your look so you want to apply it on the areas of your face where light naturally reflects which is usually the center of your face so your forehead down the bridge of your nose and your chin area and also under your eyes 
you want to place concealer under your eyes because there's shadows under your eyes and placing concealer there will make you look more awake and it also helps to cancel out the darkness under your eyes and to help brighten up your look so sometimes when you apply concealer the reason why it might look like ashy and like washed out is probably because you're using too light of a color so you definitely want to stick around like two to three shades lighter than your skin and you want to focus the concealer on the areas where you see the darkness so to blend up my concealer I like using a damp beauty sponge just because it's more subtle on the skin I never use a brush under my eyes or just to blend out concealer because the bristles are too harsh on the skin I like to just take that beauty sponge and lightly tap on it and you want to drag the concealer all the way out towards your hairline just so that it gives you like a nice beautiful blend and then whatever is left on the sponge I like to run it through my eyelid area because there's also darkness around that area so you also want to cover up that and while blending out the forehead I like to just press it you definitely don't want to bring the concealer all the way towards the top part of your forehead you just want to bring it like right at the front of your forehead in a semicircle and just blend it out and I like to use a clean side of the beauty sponge and just go over that to make sure everything is blended When you apply concealer, you're doing the opposite of contouring. So the areas that reflect light will be more pronounced. So you want to bring back dimension. So you want to apply contour on the places of your face where you see shadows, which would be your forehead around this area right here, your cheekbones, your jawline, and your nose bone. So you want to use a contour that is about two to three shades darker than your skin so that it looks nice and natural. So there's many different types of contours that you can use. You can use a powder contour, you can use a cream contour or you can use a liquid contour. So starting off with my cheekbones, I like to just press that contour right on the bone and then just blend it out with your finger. And you will always wanna start with a very small amount because if you place too much, it will be a little bit hard to blend. I like using my finger to blend out the contour because it's easy to structure the contour and to blend it out. If you're not comfortable using a contour, you can use an angled brush to blend it out. And then for the forehead, I like to focus it around this area right here and bring it towards your hairline. I like to do this to make sure that I'm covering up the lines on my hair. And when you're placing the contour, you don't want to rub or sweep the contour. You just want to press it on there so that the foundation and the consistency sealer don't move around your skin and then placing some on the jawline you just want to pay attention to the area that is dark which is just like right where that bone is you want to just lightly tap on there and this will give you that jawline structure so then now I'm gonna blend out my nose contour and to do that I like to use an angled brush and to apply the nose contour I just like to start where my eyebrows are I like to brush up the contour towards my eyebrow hairs just so that it's nice and blended and it doesn't look too harsh and then I like to drag the contour downwards and this is the reason you want to use a contour shade that is not too dark that is closer to your skin tone because it's supposed to look like your natural bone structure so what I do is I take the sponge that I use for the concealer and I run it through that nose contour to soften it up so you want to do this to get rid of the harsh lines so that it looks natural So now that we have all the liquid and cream products applied, you can go on and use powder to set all these liquid products to prevent it from rubbing off. So the reason why your makeup can begin to separate and be hard to blend is probably because you're using cream or liquid products on top of powder. It's kind of like pouring water in dirt and mixing it up. It's gonna become muddy. It's the same concept with makeup. So the best way to apply a cream contour is before a setting powder or using a face powder. Setting powder also helps to absorb the oils that are formed from using liquid and cream products. So there are two types of setting powders. So one is a loose setting powder and the other one is a pressed 
powder for the loose setting powder you want to get one that is two to three shades lighter than your skin because you're gonna apply it on the areas where we placed concealer and with the pressed powder you want to get one that is your exact skin tone because we're gonna use it to set the foundation so to apply the setting powder I like using the sponge that I use to apply concealer sometimes the reason why your under eyes can feel dry after setting it is you're probably using too much powder that is drying it up so you want to go in with a very very small amount of powder and just press it at the back of your hand to get rid of the excess powder and slowly press it on all the areas where we apply concealer. You don't only want to use a loose powder because that only sets the concealer. You also want to use a face powder to set the foundation in place. So I use a pressed powder to set my foundation and I focus on the areas where I usually crease the most, which is usually around my mouth area where I get laugh lines. So as you can see, there's a big difference in the way my skin looks like with both setting powders. It looks more so natural, like the makeup has melted onto my skin. All right, so after applying all these products, we've brought back dimension onto the skin, which is good, but we're missing something. That something is warmth. And so that's where bronzer comes in. You wanna add warmth on your skin because sometimes contouring concealer are too cool tones. So you wanna use a bronzer to bring back that warmth so it looks like blood is running on your skin. Usually a bronzer should be a couple of shades darker, but you also want the bronzer to have a little warm color, which is like a red, orange, or even like a pink color. It also gives your skin that sun-kissed look, which is also really flattering on the skin. So with bronzer, you wanna focus the bronzer on top of the contour, which is slightly above your contour. And this is also going to set that cream contour that we placed. So with bronzer, you wanna apply a small amount and build up the coverage. So you wanna take your brush, tap a little bit on the bronzer. And what I like to do is I like to pretend I'm drawing a number three on my head. So like this right here, which is also on all the areas that we placed contour. And I like placing the bronzer behind the contour. So that is right here. We place the contour around this area. So you want to bring it around this area and just press that bronzer right where your hairline is. And then I like placing it above my contour, also on my cheekbones, which is the contour was right here. So you want to place the bronzer right here. And then right on my jawline, I usually don't place it above my jawline because this has to look natural and structured. And as you can see, like my skin has a little bit more color. It looks a little bit more realistic. And it also gives me like that nice sun-kissed look. So after you apply bronzer, you want to add a little razzle-dazzle to your makeup look to make it look really beautiful and glowy. So that's where blush and highlighter come in. Even though those two are two different makeup products with two different goals, I feel like they complement each other when applied together. So if you're of a deeper skin tone, you want to use a blush that is more rich and pigmented and if you're of a lighter skin tone you want to opt for a blush that is more on the softer tone if you have bigger and rounder cheeks you want to apply the blush on the apples of your cheeks and if you have more of like a flat face you want to apply the blush slightly above the bronzer and then you want to drag it towards your hairline for a more lifted look then to add some glow onto your skin you want to place the highlighter on the areas of your face where you would usually get that glow from the Sun so that's usually above the blush and also on the highest points of your cheekbones also you want to place a little bit on your forehead but you want to place it on the pointed part of your forehead and your nose bone and your cupid's bow so the reason why your makeup might not last all day long even with the primer is because you're skipping one more step and that step is not setting your skin with a setting spray so setting spray is important because it prevents your makeup from moving and smudging so it's literally the key that locks your makeup in place you want to use a hydrating setting spray because it also will hydrate your skin so the makeup won't suffocate your skin you also want your skin to breathe at the same time with the makeup on if you have oily skin you want to use an oil free hydrating water-based setting spray so this will allow the makeup to melt onto your skin properly so that the makeup looks like your natural skin 
So you wanna take a clean beauty sponge and you want to press that setting powder onto your skin to make sure that your makeup does not crease. And the thing is, if you really want to perfect your makeup application and take it up a level, this is not enough on its own. There's one more thing that you need to consider and that's the type of brushes you need for each step. And I found that without this, you cannot create a good makeup look. That's why you should watch this video right here because it's going to take what you've learned right now and give you the right tools to accomplish this. In this video, I go into detail about the five brushes that you would need as a beginner. 